Hi guys, this tutorial is all about creating a deck of cards. Lots of random cards in random orders. And we're going to have a look at that inside our code. And then the next part of this video, uh, we're going to split this video into two parts. Uh, we are going to show that visually. So the first part is very, very code driven and not very visual at all. And then the second part will be all visual and a little bit of code driven because obviously we need to do some kind of code to to change various uh, images up here because we have all our sprites uh, and they look like this. So uh, I'm now gonna take a little bit of time out uh, before we go to the code and show you how we are going to shuffle cards in code, or at least the theory behind it anyway. Uh, we're actually gonna use an algorithm which I'm gonna talk about later on, which is called the, uh, the Fisher Yates shuffle. Uh, and it will do all the shuffling for us. It's a very, very simple while loop. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing today. We're gonna do a deck of cards. Here is how our random shuffler is gonna work. We start off at this end, and we pick a random number, and we shuffle that card with this value here, okay? Uh, so our randomizer in this example is going to be a die. So we're going to use a six-sided die because we have six cards. And our current card is shown by this. So we're going to swap the card shown by this die here. So it's the fourth one in. So one, two, three, four. So we're going to swap these two here. And then we move on to the next one. And then we roll this. And we swap with this one. So that's the first position and we move on to the next one and we roll again and we swap with the second one worryingly this might look like four is going to go back to the same position move the cursor on to the next one or pointer onto the next one and <laughs> we swap with the third one so fourth goes back to this position uh, this is just bizarre so uh, we move on to the next one here. Okay, so five swaps with three. One, two, three. So we swap these two here. And then we swap this one with the second position here. Okay. So now what we have is we have a sequence of cards that started off as ace, two, three, four, five, six. And now we have two, six, five, four, ace, three. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do this in code. So what we've just witnessed here, we're gonna actually do in our, our code uh, in C Sharp. So this is where we left off uh, last time. Uh, we have uh, our, oops, we have our three pieces of code. So the mouse button in this is very, very sensitive tonight. I don't know why, uh, I haven't changed any settings, but it seems to be really sensitive. And also I have a cold, so I'm kind of breathing a lot as well through my, my mouth. Uh, as opposed to through my nose, which is now completely blocked up tonight. But anyway, a soldier on. So we have our three uh, items of code here. We have our three behaviors, our card flipper, our card model, and our debug change card script that we had uh, from last time. So when we go to here, we can click on there, we can hit me and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this video, the, the second part of it, is actually gonna display all the cards in a row here. Uh, and show you that they are truly random. But for now, we're just gonna do the the, uh, the code part of that. So what I want you to do is go to the script folder. Oh, by the way, the uh, Unity package for this, uh, for uh, Unity 5 is actually in the, the notes below. So just look down the notes there and you'll find the Unity package uh, for the, 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 uh, the full project up until this point. But if you're playing along at home, here's how we do it. So we'll go to create and then C sharp script and then we're gonna call this deck because it's a deck of cards. So we could call it deck model in keeping with that which is probably the best way to do it but we'll, eh, what the heck, we'll just change it up a bit. Okay, so our deck model behavior is here. Uh, we're not gonna need an update for it So you can make your deck look like that. 
that is probably the best there. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the text so that uh, you don't need to strain your eyes when you, you read this. So you should have a deck that extends from mono behavior and it should just have one method just now, which is the start method. Okay, so we are going to need to have a container where we're going to place all the cards. Now our cards are represented by integers from 0 to 51. And the reason why I know that is because we actually have images. So if we go to our folder here, we see that we have an image. Image zero in the card deck is the, uh, the two of hearts. And image 51 down here is the ace of spades. So we go through from zero to 51. So that's gonna be our cards. So we need some way to, to store those values and that's gonna make our deck. Now our deck is just gonna be integer values. So we're going to create a list of integers. So we do list int cards. And that's all we need to do. Now you notice that you've got the red squiggle there. Uh, we know that we can look up list and find out that it's actually a generic list. So you can put any value here almost, any class anyway, or any um, value type. So um, th that's part of the generics co collection, but we could actually just right click here inside Visual Studio and choose Resolve, and then make sure we choose System, Collections, Collections even, Generic. And then that gets rid of the red squiggly line. Um, okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to have a public method that shuffles the cards. Now this is an important method because when we shuffle the cards, we're actually initializing the deck. Um, so that's what the shuffle card is gonna do. So that's gonna, when we actually do our game, when we want to create a new hand, that's what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle the deck. So we are going to create a public method that doesn't return any values called shuffle. Uh, and this is actually going to be called by the start method. So you can go ahead and just put shuffle into the start method. That's the only thing we need inside the, the, uh, the start method. Okay, so back up and shuffle. So what does shuffle need to do? Well, we haven't created an instance of the cards. So we're gonna use what's called lazy instantiation, which means that we are only going to create uh, an array, uh, sorry, a list of integers if we need to create a list of integers. If nobody calls deck, then we're not gonna create it. I mean, we could do equals new, which means that we've now set aside some memory, not a lot, but we set aside some memory for a new list but we're gonna use lazy instantiation. And what that means is, we're gonna to check to see if cards is null. So if cards is null, we're gonna create uh, a new copy of it. And we're gonna create a, a copy of our list int class. Uh, but what happens if cards isn't null? Well, we're gonna clear everything from that. So whatever values we still have inside cards, we're just gonna get rid of it. So that's good. Now what we're gonna do? Well, we need to have some cards in there. Now remember our cards are integers that go from zero to 51. So that's what we're gonna fill the cards with. So we're gonna use a for loop for that. So for int i equals zero. So this is our initialization uh, and this is a control variable. So we're setting our control variable to be zero and then we have to have some way to keep us inside a for loop. So that's called uh, our condition. And our condition is gonna be while i is less than 52. And then that's our conditional. And then our update statement, uh, we're going to add one to i. Every time we go through the loop, we add one to i. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna do cards dot, and then there's already a built-in method called add. And then we're gonna add that integer i. That's it, that's, that's us, we've created an unshuffled card deck. It goes from zero through to 51. Now, what we can do is we can actually look at this uh, in Unity. So I'm gonna create a new scene in Unity and I'm gonna create an empty object and I'm gonna call it card desk test. And then I'm going to add a component and the card deck I'm going to choose there. And I am going to save it as card deck 
test. Why not? So when we run it, uh, nothing happens, or at least perception is that nothing happens. But what we can do is if you go over to here, there is a little drop down. It's one of those uh, hamburger menus, they call them, with the three lines. They look like that. Uh, click on that and then choose debug. Now you notice that you get other things in here. You get instance ID, local identifier and file, all that kind of stuff. Um, but here you actually get uh, a little bit more information. Actually, you don't get a little bit more information. Why am I not seeing that? So now that we have our cards in a sorted array, so we're going zero through to 51, we need to rearrange them slightly so that uh, they are not so uh, ordered. And I have my notes over here. Uh, and what we need to do is, um, it's slightly different to, to the way I was mentioning. What actually happens is that the cursor goes from the back of the cards and each random number actually shrinks. So while we had our, our die here, or me, well, we had our, our die that was, you know, six sided and we chose, you know, a random number based on that. It's actually much more restricted than that. We start off at the, the end point and we work our way towards the, uh, the, the cursor. Remember the cursor that was represented by the dry marker pen. Uh, that moves towards the, the start of the, the array. Um, and this random number shrinks. So instead of having uh, D6, which is what this is, you'd have a D5, and then a D4, then a D3, then a D2, and then a D1, obviously. Uh, and then that's that's um, not possible, obviously, because I only have a D6. So that's the reason why I chose to, to uh, show you the randomness here. But this is uh, the actual um, uh, formula here. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, our our number of items. So while n is greater than 1, uh, we want to subtract 1 from n. So n is going to be our random number chance value. So what value are we going to swap n for? So n is our cursor. So think of n as being your cursor. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a value here called k and that's going to be the index of the card that we want to change. So k is going to be a range, and it's going to be 0 through 2, uh, n plus 1. And what we're going to do is we are going to create a temporary value so that we can swap these. So when when you saw that we had those, those two cards, I get cards back out again. So we would have these two cards here and we would swap them physically like that. We can't do that in a computer. We need to have some kind of temporary value that remembers that. We can't just swap these uh, automatically and then, then hope everything works out okay. Um, I really did shuffle these cards properly <laughs> by throwing them in the deck. Um, so uh, we're going to create a temporary value if I can spell. So temp is going to be the value at k. And then I'm going to set the value at k to be the value at n. And then I'm going to set the value uh, of n to be equal to the temporary value. And that's it. That is how we shuffle cards. It's very, very simple. Um, so let's make sure we compile that, go back to here, everything looks okay, so let's just run it, see what we get, that's good, okay, okay. I don't know if anyone was noticing there, but um, my, my code wasn't saving, so although I was hitting control S there, nothing was actually happening, I even clicked on these boxes up, these icons up here, uh, and still, sorry, I was pressing Control S, nothing happened. I was clicking on these icons up here, and nothing was happening. 
So I wasn't actually saving anything. However, what I wanted to show you was how do we know if this has actually worked well? Uh, what we can do is we can go back to the, the uh, Unity window here, press play, and you'll see that we get our deck script here and it tells you that it's a script. Very, very helpful, haha. -ha. However, if we go over to here, there's a hamburger menu. It's the one that looks like three. You've seen, probably seen it in your mobile phone. If you click on that and choose debug, it actually gives you some hidden information. You'll see that cards is grayed out, but there's actually a little twisty against it down here. Now, if you press the twisty, look what happens. You get, it tells you what size it is, so it's 52, and then it shows you the random cards inside there, which is perfect. So you see that we've actually randomized our, <coughs> excuse me, randomized the deck. So we can prove it by going back to our code and then commenting out this this part of the code here that actually does the shuffle. And we can do this very, very quickly. If we do if we press what's called a keyboard chord, the keyboard chord is called control K C. So you hold down the control key and then you tap KC in sequence. So control KC. So that's how it's commented it out. Now make sure it saves. <laughs> I know I'm telling you that and I tried to make sure it saves, but you can tell there's a little asterisk there. Um, so the little asterisk just means that it's dirty and that you have to save it. Now, we don't have to save it, you could completely ignore it and just avoid the changes. So now when we run the, the code, uh, we should now have a perfectly ordered list because that's what we would be expecting. And if we want to undo this, we do control KU. So control KU un, uh, comments the code there. And again, we see the little turny icony thing down the bottom. And when we run this, we'll now get back our completely random list. So that's us. Hi guys, sorry for that. Uh, there was some weird technical issues we were having today uh, between my sore throat and the deck of cards going all kind of weird on us. Um, and the, the fact that the code wasn't saving, which is bizarre. Uh, I've been having some weird Unity issues today. I'm not blaming Unity, I'm, I'm just saying I'm, uh, I think technology and me are having a bad day today. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, the second part will be out uh, hopefully tomorrow night. Um, and if you're watching this in uh, in a couple of months time, uh, it's, it's the next video in the sequence. Um, but uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, like the video. If you really like what you see, you can subscribe to these videos and you get timely reminder, reminders that uh, the video has been posted. Um, uh, I'm also doing a, a video tutorial on uh, a board game, which I'm, I'm currently uh, putting together a, a video for, um, and I'll let you know when that's, uh, that's going up as well. So uh, anyway, until next time, uh, thanks very much for watching.